Coincidentally enough, this week I received a couple emails requesting the exact same information, which was really a request for a search for Prince Edward Island waterfront and Waterview condos, and whether they're a good idea, and they wanted me to address security, maintenance, fees, investment, and resale value. So essentially I'll start off with what I require to set up a search. Basically, in order to set up a real-time search, which will notify you of a new listing that matches your parameters in real time from every agent, every broker, essentially I need the price, whether it has to be waterfront, what you're looking for, house, condo, commercial building, apartment, raw land, and location. And you can make that as uh, complicated or uncomplicated, the more complicated you make it, the more difficult it is to find. The challenge with condos and PEI is there's not a lot of them. Typically, there is probably about three dozen condo corporations. If that, the last time I checked, I was trying to check this morning, but the tax computer was down. So essentially, the condo corporations are like a homeowner's association for a condo. A condo, the definition is, basically you own your, your unit, but you also have shares in common area stuff, like hallways, gyms, parking lots, uh, uh, grass, roof, siding, exterior maintenance, interior maintenance, hallways. So essentially what a condo does is it relinquishes the responsibility to do the maintenance of that building to whomever the condo board elects to have that done. The condo board's usually comprised of m m people that live in the condo building, but I do need to make something clear. A condo is not a particular type of structure. A condo or condominium is a type of ownership. It basically means you own your unit and then you have the CAM or common area maintenance. So for instance, all the condo owners will supply X number of dollars per month. A modest condo in PEI might be $250, $300 a month. When you get into the more expensive buildings, the condo fees are basically based on square footage and sometimes what floor you're on. So a 4,000 square foot condo is gonna be more than 1,000. So you contribute to basically a bank account which maintains the building. And if any adverse stuff comes up, maintenance problems, for instance, we had one building where all the siding had to be replaced and every condo owner is responsible for just over $10,000. Being in a condo, similar to owning your own house, it's just you have a collaborative board making the decisions and typically tendering out the duties that need to be done. If it's a good condo board and you get cash in the bank, you're great. If it's an old building that's poorly maintained and there is no condo board and there is no home associate, homeowners association or bank accounts or condo declarations and the list goes on and on, uh, it may not be a good thing to buy into. So make sure you get all the documents pertaining to the financials, the rules and everything else about that condo before you buy it. Condos and PEI are done for a number of reasons. Obviously, it's an easy way to turn an apartment building into sellable units or condos, but it's done in other places to Avoid uh, the impossibility of subdividing. So in certain areas in PEI, typically resort districts, you cannot subdivide building lots or cottage lots. So what they'll do is they'll condo them. So the net effect is kind of similar, but different. And it has been done in areas like Cavendish. Second question was, is it a good idea? Well, that all depends on your lifestyle and what you want to do with it and how involved you want to be with the maintenance. Comparing it to a single family dwelling, house or waterfront or water view cottage, they both have their long list of advantages and disadvantages. So that's a decision you're gonna to have to make and I suggest you Google it. There's tons and tons of information on the in internet about condo ownership versus freehold or owning your own 100% right to a property. As far as security, I mean, security really isn't a huge issue in PEI for the most part. We don't have rampant crime, so I'm not sure what that question pertains to. Many of these buildings do have locked doors and keys or key fobs to get you in and cameras and lighting systems and that sort of stuff, which would make you feel more secure. But typically, crime is not a huge issue in PEI. In condos, maintenance we discussed, the money goes into a common bank account, the board, which is the people that live in the condo units typically decides on how that's being spent. Fees we covered. As far as it being a good investment and good resale value, 
Well, that would come down to the same rules and principles that apply to anything else, any, any cottage, apartment building, raw piece of land, or anything else. So I won't get into that in this video. That will come down to basically your market research on a particular property you're buying. For instance, let's say it's a fire sale or it's an estate sale. They want that property sold this afternoon by one and you can buy it for nothing or 500 grand under, under market value. Well, then that's great. If it's something that's been on the market for 10 years and it's priced way above market and they're just testing, then uh, not so much. So do your research. The last video I did yesterday covered CMAs, Comprehensive Market Analysis. It's always a good idea to do that because it's really, really easy to buy anything. A professional investor looks at the out strategy, not the in strategy as being more important. How am I gonna liquidate this asset if I need to get the cash out? Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, press the little bell symbol beside it, give the video a thumbs up, and if you have any questions about PEI, PEI Real Estate, put them in the comments below.